Ask uh, Tim. Well, he's right here. to you to share their knowledge and answer your questions and bring them to you. House to Home is a call-in show, so jot down this number, 1-800-901-9238, and get ready for some free advice. Joining us today is Kathy Smith, a water feature specialist from Tropical Water Garden. In 2006, Kathy turned her hobby of water gardening into a successful business serving the local area. She is a certified water garden contractor, and her motto is Ponds Done Right, okay. Customers Served Right. Please welcome Kathy Smith to the show. Hi, Stephanie. Mm. Hi. Okay, nice to be here. Um, we need her to sit that close. Can you close her? Okay. Okay, okay let's make sure she can kind of push it away. Like, let's do that whole thing again. Let's, okay. Let's, yeah. Can we, if water. you're going to change, and that's I fine, am, if you want to change it, I. I am Stephanie Mason T. Inviting you. Is it is it still on the on the disc that I put in there? Yeah, but I mean everything else is basically the same. It's just that I'm oh, your host. So say thank I you. I I'm your host instead I'm of. I'm so glad that you could join us. One I'm thing just, on this spot is they want you to stay up and close to that corner and me up and close to this corner because of the way it's shot. Instead of having the same name, but if she don't want to say. I think everything's queued up if we want to, but uh, we're ready to do a rehearsal here, but... Okay. Okay, so here, stand by. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5... From the studios on the Daytona State College East Campus. Hello and welcome to House to Home Outdoor Spaces. I'm Stephanie Mason-T, inviting you to join us for a very exciting program. Each week on the show, we feature a new backyard project and give you the information you need to get professional results. This week, we will take a look at backyard water features. From ponds to fountains and even waterfalls, you'll be surprised how easy it can be with just a little help. One of my favorite things about a do-it-yourself show is all the great local professionals that I get to meet. We, in turn, bring these professionals to you to share their knowledge and answer your questions. House to Home is a call-in show, so jot down this number. 1-800-901, we don't know what I mean. And don't back, not real far, just back up here. Yeah, just a little step or so. But if you need to get in there, it's okay for her to get in there to do something. Just You can, if you want to reach for something because you're talking about it, that's fine. Just reach in here and pick it up, and I'll back up then. You know, and there are times when we're close together, and that's okay. You know, that's fine. So don't don't feel like you're yeah, don't statue. So yes, we are. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I mean, should I tell the callers to say their name? They're supposed to be. 
on the Daytona State College East Campus. Hello and welcome to Help to Home Outdoor Spaces. I'm Stephanie Mason Teague, inviting you to join us for a very exciting program. Each week on the show, we feature a new backyard project and give you the information you need to get the professional results. This week, we will take a look at backyard water features. From ponds to fountains and even waterfalls, you'll be surprised how easy it can be with just a little help. One of my favorite things about hosting a do-it-yourself show is all the great local professionals that I get to meet. We in turn bring these professionals to you to share their knowledge and answer your questions. House to Home is a call-in show, so jot down this number, 1-800-901-9238, and get ready for some free professional advice. Joining us today is Kathy Smith, a water feature specialist from Tropical Water Garden. In 2006, Kathy turned her hobby of water gardening into a successful business serving the local area. She is a certified water garden contractor, and her motto is Ponds Done Right, Customers Serve Right. Please welcome Kathy Smith to the show. Hi, Stephanie. Kathy, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. It is, I've learned more about Tropical Water Garden since we've met, and it's been so exciting and fun, and I just love the story of how you got started because it's inspirational. It's something that all of us think about doing but didn't do, you tell us. Okay, well, um, in the beginning of 2006, uh, my husband and I, we would watch uh, TV with the programs on the Home and Garden channel. Of all the, everybody was, they were landscaping their backyard and everybody had a water feature. And I decided I wanted to have one. So I started researching and uh, uh, realized that I could do, I could do this. So we started digging and I wanted to have a beautiful tropical garden, um, and the goal was to be finished by Mother's Day, so I could enjoy Mother's Day in my okay. tropical garden. Right. And we, we accomplished our goal. We had a beautiful tropical garden with two beautiful ponds, and I had a beautiful Mother's Day in my tropical garden. Until about two or three weeks later, I realized I had done everything wrong, and my water was green, and the fish had to be in the top couple inches of the water in order to see them. Oh, no. So it wasn't beautiful anymore. Right. So but you fixed it. Right. I went back, doing my research, back online, and found uh, about a company that has a proven system of how to build an ecosystem pond that is very low maintenance and beautiful, looks natural, and there's, you just get to enjoy your pond and enjoy your fish without having to spend so much time working on it. You kind of touched on a lot of factors there that we all worry about. We would like to have a water feature, but we worry. Is it going to be really difficult to build, for one? And are we going to have to clean it and maintain it, pull sludge out of it, pour chemicals into it? And it sounds like you learned the hard way, but today you're going to share the information to kind of save us that learning experience, right? Right, right, right. 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 Great. Now, you did say something about an ecosystem pond. Let's get back to that a little bit, because that was the saving grace. Yes, it was. What's an ecosystem? Well, pretty much there are, are four elements in, in an ecosystem pond. You have to have rock in the pond, 
you add beneficial bacteria and you have to have the plants and the fish and they all work together to maintain the pond and you have nice clean clear water and enjoy it. That sounds like just a regular pond. So you're kind of building a real pond, a real water feature with right. bacteria, right. fish, rocks, and plants. And, plants. and, plants. and those mm -hmm. four. Right. And do you filter it? Right. It, uh, in, in an ecosystem pond, you have a skimmer, which would be mechanical filtration. It pulls the debris off the surface of the water. And you have a biofalls, which is biological filtration. And that filters the water. And then the plants are part of the filter. And they filter the nutrients out of the water. It sounds simple enough. Now what about cleaning it? Do I have to drain it and clean it? No. Um, when, with adding the beneficial bacteria to the water, it cleans the water. It prevents the sludge buildup on the bottom of the pond. Um, there's, it's very low maintenance. You simply have to clean out the debris the the leaf basket, and uh, depending on how many leaves you have falling in your pond. It sounds simple enough, and I know that Kathy, you've designed some beautiful ponds. In fact, let's take a look at some of your designs now and get an idea of exactly what you can build or we can build too once we have the right information. Um, I was surprised to learn. Now, do I need to have water in my backyard to put a water feature back there? No, as long as you have, can reach it with a hose, fill, fill the pond up, or fill the pond with water fall up, and you just would need to maybe top it off because of evaporation. But once the feature is filled, it just recirculates. Okay. That just amazes me. I'm kind of dumbfounded. I thought if I wanted a waterfall in my backyard, I was going to have to hire a plumber, dig a pipe, put a pipe in, put a big dig a big hole. I mean, we do need a depth of a hole, but how much are we talking? Is there a range? Do I have to have a four foot, five foot? We usually recommend only going two feet. Really? It's a, it's a safe pond. Um, two feet is the depth that, that the koi would need or goldfish would need, and it makes it a nice um, ecosystem pond. It sounds fantastic. What about the size of my pond? Do I have to buy a black liner and bury that in the ground? Uh, it, there are many ways you can do it. You could use a preformed liner, uh, a preformed tub. Um, we like to uh, um, just dig the hole the size depending on your backyard. It could be as small as, say, a 4 by 6 pond, or it could be as big as a 12 by 18 foot pond. Really? And you, you just dig something that big in. Right, right. You just, you just dig the hole, and we use underlayment. Which is a it protects the liner from roots and rocks, and then we use just use a flexible liner, and that way you can design the pond and form it to the size, the size and shape that you want. So this is just a felt fabric, like a, almost like a really thick landscape fabric, mm -hmm. I guess. Right. And that goes down first. First. And then this is almost like an inner tube. Right. Is that what it's, it is? It's, a it's like a rubbery? Right. It's a 45 millimeter thick rubber liner that's mm -hmm. fish safe. Okay. And that goes in so that you can form it the way that you want it. And then we completely cover the liner with the rocks and the gravel to make the ecosystem. So I can make any shape pond yes. I want. Any shape and size. Ah. Mm -hmm. So it's not so limiting as those. Right. Those Preformed right. shapes right. that are never the right shape right. that you want. Right. And well, it sounds exciting. Now, you said then you hold all this down with the rocks. Right. We put that down in there and then we place the rocks uh, to completely cover the liner, and then the rocks become part of the ecosystem and the beneficial bacteria attaches to the surface of the rocks. And this is all stuff that I can buy at a big box store. Sure. Mm -hmm. Or online. Or online. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. right. So it's not hard to find materials and not a lot of expense wise. Um, using the, the rubber liner is probably going to be a little more expensive than going with the container, but this rubber liner is guaranteed to last for 20 years, and um, you can do great things with it this way. Great. Now, you brought some other fun things with you. I want to take a look at these, because these are so cute. Now, right off the bat, what? they're so light. Right. I thought this was going to be a bronze turtle, and it could be, but for a water feature, what are these made right. of? They're, they're just resin, resin um, spitters, and they would attach with a half-inch hose, and then attach to the pump. And then, you know, if you had a bigger, like this one here, so this is it. Pump. This is my water feature control system. Right. <laughs> and you would, you would just need to have, dig your hole, and, uh -huh. you know, just enough to, to be able to hold the water. Line it with your underlayment and liner, put your pump gun in there, put the, the rocks and gravel in there, 
um, your pump going into your spitter, mm -hmm. fill the, the hole with the rocks and gravel, and the, the water is under the, the surface of the gravel. Okay, the water, so I, I put the liner in, put the pumps in, and cover all that up with gravel, right. and then put the water on top of the gravel. Put, put the water in, and yeah. the water level would be just below the gravel, oh. and then it would just recirculate, and, and, and there we you'd have, have the sound a of spinning water fish, or a spinning water. turtle, or a frog. In a small area. In a small area. Well, you know what? Rather than just talk about it, let's take a look. I know you brought an example of how we can build our own container garden, container water garden, complete right over here. Let's take a look over here and see what we've got. Okay, they're going to walk. Okay, everybody needs to move. Now, this is a giant, just a so giant start bowl, with a, right? Right, just a self-contained pottery. And then I used a piece of the underlayment to put in here to just protect the, so it didn't didn't crack the, the uh, And that's just that fabric that we right. talked about earlier. Right. Okay. And then I like to, in order to protect the pump, I like to use, this is just a piece of drain pipe, six inch drain pipe. And I like to take just a little piece and put that in there. I put the pump down inside of it. Now this is the same kind of pump we looked at earlier, just right. a little bit a little bigger, bit bigger right. a little larger, so right. I can move more water, mm -hmm. I assume. Right. Right. Now in your, in your large ponds, is it the same technology? Basically the same, but just again, a larger pump. The, this pump is three, 350 gallon per hour, and we usually use, um, a, say, 2,000 gallon per hour uh -huh. um, in a small pond. Okay, okay, so that's just gonna, it's the same technology, just in a bigger, let me angle this a little bit so you can see it, there we go. Um, the same type of pump, so it's just a submerged right. water pump. Right, and okay. then it's done in there, and then we mm -hmm. need we need to have a piece of tubing. And in this case, I, I wanted to have two fountains of water coming up. So okay. I have a, the connector here and just used a, a T and an elbow so that I could put the tubing on there. And, then and these are all ready design things. I can just decide how many spigots I right, want and right. screw it on. Right, so and the more, the more fountains that you would want to have coming up, you would have to have a bigger power. Um, so this one, like I said, is 350 gallon per hour because I have the two. It seems like so much water. 350 right. gallons an hour. It just yeah. seems like a lot, but yeah. it's just all it's just all recirculating, the, recirculating. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Recirculating. Just this this holds probably about a, a gallon and a half of water, and it's just going to recirculate it. So we want to put that in there, and then we want to protect the pump from the rocks and the gravel. So again, I just take another piece of underlayment. Okay, I'll help you here. I'm, no, just, I'm just covering it up, right? right. There's no cover, magic. Right. right, we're just covering it up just okay. to keep the rocks away from that the, the pump. Okay, and once we have that in there, then we want to add now. Now, as we continue going through building our container garden here, I want to remind you that Kathy is here to answer your questions also. So give us a call at 1 800 901 9238. If you've been thinking about building a pond, or if you have a question about a water feature or pond that you already have, give us a call now. So you just dump the rocks in. Now, does it matter what kind of rock I use? No. Some rocks no. disintegrate or anything? Um, you probably wouldn't want to use coquina rock. It can um, just change uh, the pH of some of the water, which in a small container garden, you're really not going to have that issue. But if, if you were out in the sun, um, you could have some, just a little bit of like string out you build up on the, on the rocks. And if that ever happened, all you have to do is turn the water flow, unplug the pump, and just let it dry on the rocks and the algae would go away. Okay. Um, Hello. Thank you. Now in this one, we talked about the four elements, one of them being fish. Now we're not going to put fish right. in this one. Right, this is not going to actually be any ecosystem. Okay. We're just going to have the plants. And since the, the gravel will be, or the water will be just under the gravel, uh -huh. these right. aquatic plants in here. Okay. So let's go ahead and... Do I have some? Now I have some yeah. pretty plants. And, right. And, Aquatic plants These mean aquatic they don't need plants. dirt, right? Right. right. Okay. They, don't, they don't need dirt, and we plant our when we put the plants in our ponds. Um, right. In an ecosystem okay. pond, we plant the plants right, right down into the gravel, but, and then that way um, the roots travel out through the gravel and become a filter mat. So this is just on a smaller scale. So the roots of the plants actually filter the water. Okay. Right. They use the nitrates and nit nitrites, uh, nitrates, um, to which is basically yeah. fertilizer. Okay, that so sounds like a good question. Put that in the right place. Yes, that's yeah. fine. I know there's a design yeah. element here. You can just, just put, it, put it, it together. Okay. And then, and then I've got this kind of big one. 
Now let's just stick that plant in there, and we've got a caller on the line. Caller, go ahead with your question for Kathy. Caller, do you have a question? Hello? Hello? Do you have a question for Kathy about a water feature? Yes, I, I was wondering, um, what, how do you keep... How, yes, hello? Yes, go hello? ahead with your question. Yes, I was wondering if, if, how do you keep mold and mildew from uh, getting into the uh, pump system? And also like leaves and, and uh, bird food, for lack of a better word. But things like that to, to stop it from going through. Well, your, your pump needs to be protected. Um, you know, we usually place the pump in a skimmer so that it is underneath a filter mat and the debris net would, would collect all of the raw, uh, the uh, leaves or anything that fell into the pond. So he needs kind of two things. If he's got buildup on his actual pump, then he needs to protect the pump. He needs to protect the pump from the, whatever is getting to the pump. And then you said a, a debris? A debris, a debris net. net. Very, very similar to like a, a pool skimmer. Uh -huh. A skimmer on, on the pond would would uh, collect the skim of the net or the basket inside the skimmer would collect the leaves and the debris. Okay. I'm turning that a little bit so we can actually see you. I know the yeah. front of our the front of right, our right. our fountain is right here, but we want to now we're gonna just cover me up with grass right. instead of you. That's good. We have another caller on the line. Caller, go ahead with your question for Kathy. Do you have a question? Yes. How can we help you? Go ahead. We can answer your question for you. Okay, I'm Josh Foss from St. Cloud. If I have aquatic life in my water feature, and one give you a slow zoom, uh -huh. slowly zoom back one. And um, how do I keep the water uh, heated? The water is heated for, now do you have to heat, like, I'm, I'm guessing he means if he has fish. Do we have to heat the water for the fish? Well, it would depend on what kind of fish you have. Um, I'm familiar with koi and goldfish, and they actually, when the water temperature gets below 50 degrees, they will actually hibernate in the bottom of the pond. So it's not necessary to heat the water. You just don't want to feed the fish when the water temperature gets too cold. Okay. So it's not like our goldfish or our tropical fish in the house where you have to have a special light, right. a special Usu heater. Right. right. Usually in a pond, you're going to have koi or goldfish is, is the, the usual, and the water does not have to be heated. But the secret is you said don't feed them then. Right. Don't feed them once the water temperature gets below 50. Below 50 degrees. Right. So right. do you recommend They're, everyone can. have a thermometer on their pond? Uh, yes, I, I, okay. I would, definitely. Whenever whenever it gets to the, the water temperature, you know it's getting cool. It's, it's, it's a good idea. To to, uh, have a thermometer. Oh, this is looking so fun. And this is so easy. And I don't, I don't think I messed you up. But you, can't, you can't really mess it up. No, you can't mess it up. Now just have fun some, with it. And, and then these are just some like, decorative ones. Some larger rocks. Some larger rocks. And all of this, you just kind of put it in. And we want to, get now, we want to bury this thing right, completely? Right, right. We want okay. to get the tubing all covered up. Okay, covered up. We do have another telephone call on the line also. Caller, go ahead with your question for Kathy. Do you have a, a question? Yeah, hi. Hi, Kathy. Uh, this is uh, uh, Bruce in Orlando, and I wanted to know if there were any uh, rooting hormones or any nutrients that you would use to uh, get these plants to uh, take off the established fat. Well, the nice thing about aquatic plants is they will grow, they will, uh, they, most aquatic plants will cluster, and so if you uh, wanted to plant them in there or to divide them, all you have to do, you don't have to be real careful, you just divide them, and you can propagate them that way. Um, so do we have to treat them before we plant them? If I just go to the store and buy an aquatic plant, I can just take it out of the container from the store and stick it right in here, or do I have to do something with it first? You, can just, you can just stick it right in there. Now, um, I like to use, usually in, when, I'm, when I'm building a pond, I don't like to fertilize the marginal plants. These are, would be the mar they're called marginal plants. I don't like to fertilize them because they have a job in the pond, and that job is to pull the, the nutrients out of the water so you don't end up with green water. Um, in this case, okay. we may have to add a little bit of fertilizer uh, just to keep them green and, and growing and to bloom. Um, and I like to use a uh, time release fertilizer, um, six month time release fertilizer. 
So normally, or in some instances, you don't want to fertilize your saying because then the plants won't do the job right, they're they supposed won't do. to do by keeping the water clean. Exactly. But if the plant starts to look brown or, I mean, right. how do I know to add or, fertilizer? Well, well, in a case like this, though, we don't have the fish to fertilize it, so we would want to, once the plants maybe started turning brown or um, maybe the leaves, as an aquatic plant grows up, the, it will shoot a new leaf up and another one will die. If it wasn't shooting new foliage up, then it might need a little bit of fertilizer just to give it a boost. All right, so that's a good sign. I do not have a green thumb. And it's sort of a joke that I kind of kill a lot of house plants and then I just put new ones in. I don't want to do that with, with these plants. And how long, realistically, should this last? Do I have to, does it get so big that I have to start over again, or do I trim it? How do I maintain it? I think I have it pretty much what you would have to do is, as it just got too full and it looked out of place, all you have to do is just pull a clump out and then let it grow again. Okay. Um, you just divide it, but you wouldn't have to start over or tear it apart. Okay. We have Paul on the line for Kathy. Do you have a call? Or call or go ahead with your question. Okay. How can we help you? Hello? Hello, go yes. ahead. Hi. My name is Kathy, and I live in Deltona. And I have a question about um, my pond. It has fish in it and some plants, but I don't have any rocks. And I was wondering, how do I keep the green uh, from growing in it? The, the green um, on the sides of a, of a pond, if you don't have it covered with rock, is pretty much a natural thing. It would get it would, the algae that would grow on the sides is, is like a, a carpet algae, and um, the, there really isn't a lot you can do do about that. However, if it's green water, then you, you may need to add more plants, or you have to have some sort of filtration. You might have to, if you don't have a, a biofalls in, in a waterfall, you might have to add uh, some sort of a pressure filter, um, but you have to be able to remove the nutrients from the water. Now what about the bacteria we talked about? Now she said she had three of the elements. She had the fish right. and the plants. You have to have a surface area for the bacteria to attach to, and that can be either in the rocks or um, there's um, something called bio balls that if you had a place to hide these bio balls, um, you have which is right here. Right. Now this is and, what you're talking about. I'll hand one you so we can take a look at that. You can get a, a mesh bag and put bio balls in it and say you have um, just a place where the water is flowing over it. You might not have a waterfall. The bacteria will actually attach to the surface. Mm -hmm. So if you do have surface area for bacteria to attach, just add beneficial bacteria. To, to help clean the water. Okay, good solutions. Let's set those back down. We'll continue with our rock here. This is really looking nice and so fast. We're, I mean, we're doing this live. We're not in time release or anything. Scratch time. We've got another call on the line. Caller, go ahead with your question for Kathy. Hello, caller. Go ahead with your question. Hi. This is from my question is whether or not you could put a pond around the base of a tree if it hurt the root system. Put a pond around the base of a tree. Would that hurt the roots if you did that? Um, the, if you put it too close to the tree, the roots may try to poke through the liner. You wouldn't want it really close. Um, the other thing would be the amount of leaves that if it was, say, an oak tree or, or a something that lost a, a lot of leaves, then you have a lot of debris in the pond. Okay. Um, not, it seems like you couldn't dig down very far. Right, the right, would be it, right, right. The, roots, the roots would be there. It just would depend how close. I mean, if you had a big tree, and, and you wouldn't want to put it directly around the base of the tree, because okay. there just wouldn't be any and the soil to dig into. In. Now, we, this is looking really good. I want to make sure we get a chance to turn this on. So we've got our rocks in place. We're kind of camouflaged our, our spouts here. Now do I just dump the water in? Yeah, okay, I'm going to reach down water. here and grab the water. And this is just regular tap water? Just regular water. Okay, I don't need to treat it or anything? No. Okay. I mean, if, you, if, you, if you have high chlorine, but I mean, well, there's, there's such a, a low amount of water that's going in here. It'll okay. just it'll basically be like watering your plants at your house. Now, if I have fish, of course, 
Right. I don't want to just use tap water. Right. If you have, have, if you're adding water to the pond and you have chlorinated water, okay, um, you would need to add a, just a, a conditioner, a dechlorinated water. How do I know how much is enough? You want to have the water, well, the water has to cover the pump. And normally you would just want to have it just below the, the gravel. We, we really need more gravel in here. A little more gravel. Okay. To 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 that in. Okay. Um, that. All right. And then okay. I'm going to take these bottles out and you hook that up. And while she's hooking up the pump, let's go ahead and take another telephone call. Caller, go ahead with your question for Kathy. Uh, I wanted to ask, there was a particular stun that I'd stay away from when, when adding it to a uh, koi pond. So he's got a koi pond and wants to put some new stones in there. Is there anything you should not put in because it's a koi the, pond? The, the one thing that you don't want to do is to use coquina rock. Coquina rock, it, it uh, is porous and it will um, degrade over time. And it also can change the pH of the water. In an ecosystem pond, we normally don't really worry about the pH of the water. Um, but if the whole, if you had a lot of coquina rock in there, it could change the pH and you would end up with an algae problem, just string algae. Uh, no, we, we look, look, we did it. <laughs> look how pretty that is. And you can just play with it, have fun That's with it. Okay. You know, there are all different colors of rock. There's some, yeah. some rose quartz if you just wanted to to put in there just to, to decorate it. Now we literally built this whole thing in a matter of 10 minutes. And we were talking the whole time. Right. But we could even do it faster if we weren't talking the whole time. And it's just beautiful. An assortment of plants. And now they say water, running water. It's just very relaxing. Right. And soothing. And, soothing. and it's it is. just something simple to have just the running water. And you can, you know, if it's not coming out the way you want, you just kind of move the, the tube. And you, know, you want to just kind of hide it so it gives the effect of where's the water coming from. This is so fun. And so many, this would be a plus to any backyard patio or deck. And it's just beautiful. Thank you so much for coming in. And it has happened again. We've run out of time too soon. We want to thank you to tuning in to House to Home Outdoor Spaces and for calling in with your questions. We'd also like to thank our guest, Kathy Smith of Tropical Water Gardens, for sharing her expertise. If you are not able to get your question answered, please email us at channel15 at daytonastate.edu. And we'll see you next time when we we'll work on yet for another backyard project. See you later. Music up, music up. And CG1 in. Roll 67, roll 67. And change. And change. Change.